On April 23rd, I sent a letter expressing the collective concerns of many citizens in Arizona to the Honorable Doug Ducey, care of Stephanie Murphy, Director, Office of Constituent Services, uh, Governor Douglas A. Ducey. <clears throat> in the letter, I went on to say, first, I would like to congratulate you on your win for the governor of Arizona. Now, this brings me to the reason I'm contacting you. Many of the residents I've spoken to over the past couple of weeks are very concerned about the participation of Arizona in the Jade Helm 15 exercise that's to take place this summer. Among some of the people I've had discussions with include two high-ranking Army and Air Force officers retired. At first, they expressed disbelief that our military would be conducting a realistic military training exercise of this scale in civilian areas on U.S. soil. However, when I showed them the SOCOM documents outlining the breadth and scope of the operation, they were unnerved by it, to say the least. Below are some of the areas of concerns expressed by Arizona residents, your constituents. Information published from official sources claim there will only be from 1,200 to 1,600 special ops soldiers participating. Concerns were raised questioning how are so few ops personnel supposed to achieve any meaningful results in the area that comprises about 25% of the landmass of America. Our concerns were also reflected in the comments by retired military brass mentioned above that the numbers don't add up considering the landmass being covered. RMTs of this scale have never been conducted among the civil, civilian population of the U.S. Not only are these RMT exercises to be conducted primarily during the hours of 11 to 4 a.m., the primary focus is on the identification, extraction, or rendition of insurgents, simulated live fire, the prevention of migration and containment of civilian populations in designated holding areas. In other words, the restriction of civilian movement outside the exercise area with a tactic entitled Mastering the Human Domain, No Turning Back. The human domain with respect to the exercise is defined as, quote, the human domain is the totality of the physical, cultural, and social environments that influence human beha behavior to the extent that success of any military operation or campaign depends on the application of unique capabilities that are designed to fight and win population-centric conflicts. It is a critical and complementary concept to the recognized domains of land, air, maritime, space, and cyberspace. The fact that they are asking permission from local authorities is ludicrous, as this is not, the, this is not a new strategy. They used this strategy in Afghanistan in 2013, and you can read about that exercise conducted successfully in this unclassified uh, military PDF, and I provided the governor with that link. It is important to note when the term terrain is being used with regard to this exercise, it is not refer referencing land topography, it is referencing the human terrain, and this is very unsettling. So why the need to replay this again among the civilian population in the United States? In conclusion, our, co our collective questions to you are, one, did you have a choice in the partic participation of the state of Arizona and its residents in this exercise, or was this imposed on your administration and the people of Arizona by the federal government and or the military? If yes, it would go a long way to belay the fears and concerns of your constituents to withdraw from this exercise. If no, the people of Arizona have a right to know this. Number two, do you have a contingency plan for Arizona and its re residents should any aspect of this exercise go sideways? 
As we are all too familiar now, many of these planned military and police quote-unquote training exercises have a tendency to go live. Number three, do you still champion your commitment to limited government? This is being viewed by many as a vast overreach of authority by the federal government and or military. Number four, why do you think the military has chosen to opt out Colorado, an HTS permissive region? Is this so the exercise can focus its concentration on the HTS slash hostile and uncertain regions of which Arizona is one? Number five, do you feel the federal government has the right to usurp the powers granted to the states to govern, manage, train, and conduct oversight of local law enforcement agencies as set forth in the 1033 program without any congressional reporting or oversight? Number six, are you in favor of federalization and militarization of police and other constabulary peacekeeping agencies as indicated in the President's Executive Order 13684-21st Century Policing? Number seven, has the Rubicon not been crossed when the federal government, with the cooperation of the states, start employing asymmetrical warfare tactics on the people such as HTS or human terrain systems, mastering the human domain, no turning back, winning the hearts and minds of the people, and by dominating domains of air, land, maritime, space, and cyberspace. The recommendations and action items on these fronts are outlined in the interim report on the President's policies are supported by his task force on 21st century 21st Century Policing of America. Thank you for your time and consideration on this matter. We look forward to your reply. So here it is, almost 20 days later, and this is the reply I received from Governor Ducey's office. If you would like a copy of the email that I sent the Governor of Arizona, you can contact me at the email address that I left in the description box of this video below, and I will send you a copy. You can customize it and send it to your own state governor, and I wish you more luck than I had with the Governor of Arizona. Thank you for watching, and please share this video with everyone.